a well-equipped saint knows how to win souls. The goal of this scripture is to have an army of well-equipped saints. Well-equipped saints that also know how to hear the voice of the Lord and at the drop of a hat say, you know what, I think God's saying this to you so that you can minister out in the highways and the byways so that you can minister the word of Lord, the word of life wherever you go and that you also carry that apostolic anointing that you can actually move in signs, wonders, and miracles. Matter of fact, I want to remind you, and we said this in prayer today, Mark chapter 16 actually says this, these signs will follow Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. No. That's not what it says, right? These signs will follow who? Those that believe. If you believe, wave your hand at me. These signs will follow those that believe. That's each and every one of us, right? And so our goal for each and every one of us is to be a well-equipped saint, so that we know how to win souls, we know how to make disciples, we know how to give godly counsel, we know how to give the word of the Lord, and we know how to move in the supernatural no matter where we go in the earth. Amen? How many believe that that's what God's calling us to? God's calling us to that as a body. God's calling us to that individually so that we can rise up in a place of maturity. Amen? So our very last core value that we haven't talked about yet is the voice of the Lord. We demonstrate the voice of the Lord every time we come together. Whether it's through a prophecy, like Pastor Tiffany got up and gave a prophecy today. Whether it's through a prophetic song, like Pastor Sandy and, and, uh, and uh, Gina Smoots began to lead out in spontaneous song of the Lord. No matter what it is, where it is, we believe that whenever we gather, God wants to speak. Amen? That's, that's part of our DNA in this house. And so I want to talk a little bit about this and just remind us how important this actually is. So our statement regarding this core value is that the voice of the Lord means this, revealing God's prophetic purposes to bring breakthrough, increase, and fulfillment of destiny. Breakthrough, increase and fulfillment of destiny. How many of you want some of that in your life? Amen. So the prophetic actually is a component that brings breakthrough against opposition or against resistance and helps us to step in to the fullness of what God has already done for us. Now, I like to say that the prophetic is manifested as we prophesy over people, over places, and as we prophesy into possibilities. Have you ever heard a word from the Lord and you go, wow, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> I didn't even know that was possible. We actually see the scripture where people receive prophetic words from prophets in the day. But there's also times that people prophesied over whole cities. So we believe that God wants to release his voice over us individually, over our family, over our business, over our region, our territory, over our nations? Do you believe that God has a prophetic word for the United States of America? Amen? I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the, the words the Lord gave me this year for America. When everything has been in chaos, the Lord just said, tell the people of God I'm up to something. I just want to remind you guys, God's up to something. No matter what you see happening, God's up to something. Amen? Amen? There's times that my husband and I will turn on the news and we'll see the crazy stuff that's going on and we'll look at each other and we'll say, God's up to something. <laughs> we got to just keep reminding ourselves that God is in control. Amen? This is why it's so important. This is not a sideline issue. The prophetic, hearing the voice of God, it is not a sideline issue. John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus said this, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Now, let me just show you how far we've come with the voice of the Lord. 40 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe even more recent than that, if you were to say to a psychiatrist or a psychologist that you heard the voice of God, they would give you a psychiatric evaluation and diagnosis because they didn't believe that God spoke to people. 
But let me show you how far we've come in the last 30 years since God has begun to establish once again in the hearts and lives of his people that he is indeed speaking. And um, just, I think it was two years ago, President Trump was giving a State of the Union address and he highlighted a story about um, an officer that was responding to a call from a young woman who was addicted to major drugs and she was also pregnant. And as he responded to the call, President Trump said this in a State of the Union address. He said, the officer heard the voice of the Lord speak to him that he was to intervene and help this young woman. And I think they helped the young woman. I think the officer and his wife actually adopted her baby. And they helped her to get back on her feet coming out of addiction. But I brought that up because in the State of the Union address, the President of the United States talked about how an officer on the beat actually heard the voice of God and actually responded. Amen? We're living in a day where God wants to speak to all of his people. God wants us to hear his voice on a daily basis. Amen? Deuteronomy 28. I was just reading from Deut Deuteronomy 28. And it says this, Now it shall come to pass... If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. Not a sideline issue. As you read through the scripture, you see that there's time after time after time that God revealed his mind, his will, and his purpose to mankind. Sometimes through a dream, sometimes through an angel, sometimes the voice of the Holy Spirit would just speak directly to people. But one thing is for certain, every single one of us ought to be praying that God would cause us to hear his voice with greater clarity and with greater power. I believe, guys, this is what it's going to take to navigate this time that is ahead. And to navigate the seasons that we're in is if each and every one of us learn to tune our ears to the voice of the Lord. So I'm going to tell you several values or things that we can expect when the voice of the Lord comes. Number one, the voice of the Lord is purposeful. It's purposeful. God reveals his plans and his purpose. The word purpose means the reason that something exists. And one of the foundational scriptures that we use all the time is Proverbs 29, 18, which says, where there is no vision, people perish. How many have ever heard this scripture? Where there is no vision, people perish. There's several other translations that translate it a little bit differently. They'll say where there is no vision, where there is no prophecy, where there is no prophetic word, where there is no revelation. This is the way that some other places translate this word. People perish or they wander aimlessly, they dwell carelessly, they cast off restraint, they're scattered abroad, they run wild, and they're uncontrolled. Lawlessness. What is, what is, what is, what do they need? They need a vision from God. 